Look at that face. There she is. Oh, what a what a put em. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. That's Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. She's out in Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon, which is very near Portland, which I want to talk about in a moment. We'll talk about uh, Portland, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, talk about Portland. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, uh, how you doing? It's okay. It's okay. I mean, how's your day-to-day? -day? Is it... It's not, I, I, there's no more, no more is there ever a day without pain. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I can control it to a large degree. Yeah. With um, over-the-counter painkillers. Uh, lately, it doesn't always work. And, you know, it's not a killer pain where you want to scream and yell and beat your head against the wall. It's, it's just the small grinding pain that just everything difficult you yeah. know yeah and um and i have very very little energy and the smallest things take it away you know if if i get a long email from someone as much as i love that person or i'm curious about that person it's oh no do i have to read all of that yeah yeah and and it's not just that i mean it's all kinds of things like do I really have to make lunch? <laughs> Let me ask you something. Now, I, I know you're probably going to get irritated when I say this, but how much of that exhaustion is also exacerbated by the coronavirus and you having to stay indoors? Oh, not for me, not at all. Because for me, I have just... I go, I go for, you know, I can go for a walk when I want to around here, except that I, I can't because I don't have the energy and I... I don't breathe so well, so my walks are involved in taking the trash out and making, an, go to the mailbox and once a week walk as far as the car to go to the supermarket. I don't miss it at all. I've got windows to open on a nice day when it's not too hot. Um, you know, I'm a city girl and I live in the suburbs now. Yeah. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. To me, walking around means Asking, you know, going past all kinds of different people and things going on and stuff. And that may not be going on as much in New York right now, but I guarantee you there's a lot more activity in New York than there is anywhere near me. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I, because I, I don't want to bring it all around to me, but it always does. Uh, it, it, I find that I have been in for so long now that I am starting to feel the effects of that. I'm starting to I have constant tiredness, you know. Um, and, and my wife seems to think I'm, I'm, I have depression over this whole thing about, you know, the being indoors. I mean, we've been indoors. I've basically been indoors for, what, five and a half months, something like that? I mean, that can you know, drive you I'm, You're not going to like my response to this. Okay. Get over it. All right. Oh, Just oh, get over, get over it. it. Is yeah. that or you'll kill people going out and breathing on them? Make up your mind. Yeah, right. Well, yesterday or day before. I just have no, I have so little patience with that. I mean, it's my patience is gone over that. We can either kill another 150,000 people or we can stay in and wear masks. And the, we you're absolutely. There's no you're, question. You're, you're absolutely right. The only thing that I've got to say that we're so proud of the other day uh, on, uh, I guess it was Monday, or was it Monday? Yeah, Monday, uh, we had in this state, take a guess how many cases of coronavirus. Oh, I don't know. Uh, how many I deaths? Know. How many deaths? I, I, come on, stop it. Two That's deaths. Not, not two, a useful two, question. Two. None, um, none in New York. You had a very small no. number. But none in New York State. Uh, what I don't, also don't like is everybody, every state has to do it themselves. You know, viruses don't know anything about borders. Right. And and I don't understand. Don't understand how the rest of the world, troubled as they are by this, are doing a much better job than we are. Well, I do understand. Well, because they took it seriously from the beginning. The day it started happening, but, they know, closed I mean, everybody down. I'm sorry down. that I yelled at you about that. But I'm really tired of people moaning about being indoors. Make a choice die or stay indoors well it's either die or kill somebody else that's what i yeah. said yeah yeah no I bet, but, but so i'm, I'm kind of tired of the whining 
We stay in for as long as it takes. People forget that what the reason Italy is a straight line now, and the reason that England's a straight line is, and France is that they all did force people to stay indoors, and and that drove it down. You know, and and they've managed to keep it down, but by not letting anybody in from the United States. You know, we're we're so infected, and we are it, it, we have a problem right now that didn't need to be. Okay, and and uh, I mean we have people who are dead as a result of this who didn't need to die, but no, our selfishness in America. Selfishness is one of the things. Okay that we're a very selfish country. Yeah, I think maybe up above selfishness, but stupidity. Well, yeah, okay. Um, our, our, our governor yesterday did a thing about these kids out in, in Astoria who were partying out in the street, and he said, you don't hear this much from a governor, but you're just being stupid. Yeah, he's right, he's right. He said, you're being stupid. And if we could solve this thing tomorrow, if Americans didn't say, oh, it's my right to not wear a mask. No, it's not your right not to wear the Constitution. Well, you know what kind of people they are. They are also the same ones who spit in the face of people who ask them to put a mask on. Yeah. And that's all you need to know about them. Yeah. And, 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 and I don't, it, nobody should die from this. This should never have happened. But it did, and... It really is showing who is who out in public. I mean, you know, just before we started, you mentioned Portland. I live right here next to Portland. And there's a whole political thing I guess we'll get into later. But um, but it happens here as, as everywhere. But there are just a few people who are you know, dumb enough to keep walking around without masks. And it's not just themselves, it's everybody else, as you point out. It's such a simple thing. We have so little tools against this virus, but we can stay indoors, mask up when we go outdoors, keep our distance from one another, and you know, and we're gonna have to do it for as long as it takes. Yeah. Or, or more, what are, what are we up to 140,000 and change? Oh yeah. Dead in oh yeah. The United oh, yeah. States. Yeah. I mean, and the fact that I sa said and change is a really bad thing. We're getting way too well, used to those numbers. Today, well, this is uh, this is Wednesday. Okay. Today, uh, California just beat New York out for the most cases. Can you I, imagine? Just that? before we we said hello, I heard that it would would do it today or tomorrow. It, it but did I, it. It did it. They we're no longer number one. That, that disappoints us greatly. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, it's, uh, per capita, we're still the highest, but, you know, it, it's still, it's, it's it, it, the whole, it, when did a, a mask, oh, I forgot to turn my light on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's so cute, that I, little Up light. until now, we haven't been on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right, yes. No, the thing I don't understand is how wearing a mask or not wearing a mask became a political issue. And I think the only reason it became a political issue is because the president made it a political issue. You know, what's so interesting about that is, first of all, it's not hard to wear a mask. But the thing is, you don't even have to talk about it. If your leaders wear a mask every time you see them, and once in a while you mention this is what's going to save everybody. Did my light just change? I think it did or something. I don't know. Yes, what they're doing is putting a new roof on my building, and they just put out... This big tarp right outside oh, my window. Oh, I see. Well, you're okay. We can still see you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to do that. This, this may involve more loud pounding in a little yeah. while, too. I forgot what we were saying. Where were we? <laughs> well, we were talking about the politicizing of wearing a mask. Yeah, I mean, if, if the entire, you know, all of the people who are in charge mm -hmm. to office, if from the very beginning, once we re understood that masking was going to help, had just done it every time they appeared somewhere out in public, I don't think there would be a question. It would never have become a political issue. The president and the governors who go along with him and all of their minions made it a political question. 
Our leaders made it a political question. And if they're up for re-election, that means we don't need those kind of people anymore. We're in a lot of trouble. Well, I mean, the fact It's about to get even darker. They're doing more out there. Well, once you disappear, we'll call it quits, okay? okay. But you, you look fine. The lighting is really good now. Uh, <laughs> oh, should I ask them to leave all that stuff? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the thing is that it, you're right. It is so easy to wear a mask. Well, I'll, dis I'll disagree with you this far. Right now, the temperature in New York is uh, at 90 degrees. If I went outside with a mask on, it's a little more difficult than it would be if it were a little cooler. Oh, tell me about it. Do you have COPD? I know. Uh, you, you probably couldn't wear a mask because of the COPD. You probably just have I to have to wear a mask because I can't go out if I don't wear a mask. Right. But it means even when I park as close to the supermarket door as I can, mm -hmm. it's by the time I get hopefully a cleaned basket to push, and can you hear the pounding <laughs> and get inside? What I do is maneuver my way around to a little place where I'm out of anybody else's way. And I just stand there trying to get my breath for two or three minutes from just that yeah. little walk with the mask on. And, um, it's, uh, and, and, and what I keep thinking about the people who say they have a right not to wear a mask is, or the ones who, who say there's a medical reason not to. I'm sure there are. But I get by with the mask. You know, I have to go a lot slower. I have to stop and, you know, calm myself down yeah. until the breathing comes back. But I get through it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't want anybody else to get sick because unknowingly I have the virus and breathe on them or cough or something. And I don't want the same in reverse. Um, well, the problem we're having is young people here. Because they've got the idea they're invincible against this, which they're not, well, by the way. they shouldn't by now. I mean, you know, anybody over the age of 12 or 14 should be, you know, absorbing enough news that they understand that's not true about Wait them. a minute. 14 and absorbing news? They should be. I mean, it's, it's hard not to, you know. You and I did, um, but I don't know if today's kids do, you know. Well, I don't know. I, but, I but don't you know, they don't, they don't get with the concept. That no, they probably if they get it, yeah, it's not it's not going to be pleasant. You know, but the they problem get it. with that is is also the same problem with having kids go back to school. Mm -hmm. When you're a teenager, it's your job to rebel against everything adults say, right? Right. It's your job when you're a teenager. Yeah. So the idea of sending kids back to school, you know, of distancing, mm -hmm. and wearing masks. Uh, it's not going to, there's always going to be kids that won't do it. And also, even a bigger one to me, the little kids, is that they're, you know, five, six, seven years old. If you tell them, you know, you've got to stay six feet, say this far from Mary, well, then they go play or they're going to do something at the in their classroom and they forget. They're just kids. They can't help it, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it makes no sense to put them back. And in and there. and granted, you know the the point is that granted, if they get it, they're pr it's probably not going to be lethal. But well, but, nobody knows that. But for any babies parent, are dying. any parent knows that when they send their kids to school, they start getting sick because the kids bring cooties home from school. They don't they have do. them, but they bring them home. Yeah. And and that's exactly the problem. You know, and and so, how you get little kids to understand this, but when they get to be in their teens, uh, you know, you can you you can reason with them to a certain yes, extent. Yes, you can to a degree. <laughs> I mean, think back to when you were a teenager. Come well, on. Well, you and I have never jump. had kids, so we have no right to even talk about this. But I I do. But think you know certain things about kids. You know that yeah. little kids are not on their own going to remember to keep a distance from their friends. They right. just they're going to get busy playing a game and they're just going to forget, you yeah. know? That's how it is. That's how kids are. Um, and it's, you know, the other thing, the, the kind of bigger bigger picture question um, about people not masking up and going out to COVID parties and that sort of thing is, let's see if I, is that this is a once in a lifetime occurrence. It's a horrible, terrible Thing. 
Yeah. Starting from, you know, low level mayors up to the president. Russia, Russia, we got to get back to normal tomorrow morning. If we don't get back to normal by tomorrow morning, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be awful. So right, everybody right. open all the stores and all the schools and do everything like you did before. Um, no. And it's not, I mean, you can't control a natural event. Well, like this. also, the president is thinking about his reelection. He's not thinking about the safety of the American public. And he keeps going, if the economy's bad, I can't claim the economy. All right? And yeah. the fact mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that if you continue with this behavior, the economy is going to get even worse because... Well, you can't you have know. a better economy until you get the virus under control or a way to live with it. Right, right. And until that happens, nothing we do is going to make the economy much better. Right. And I don't understand why people don't get these things. That it's not, None of this is, is you know... This, none of it is difficult to understand. But you see, Ronnie, the problem is we live in a capitalistic country. And here we see a perfect example where money trumps life. You know, where they would rather have a good, what's going to happen to our economy? Why don't you say what's going to happen to our population? What's going to happen to the health of the public? You know, people who are getting COVID and survive it look like they're going to be having long term effects from this disease yeah, we all know that. you know uh, and and so that should be our primary concern For the economy comes second to human life and and but we don't seem to understand that and trump certainly doesn't understand it you know well you know it's, it's also we should talk about what's going on in portland. yeah now you live within a stone's throw of portland okay uh and yes. we know what's happening in portland uh the United States has gone to war against its own people. That's basically how I look at it. It's a secret police. I wish people would start saying that. Yeah. It is a secret police. The only insignia they wear on that camo is it just says police, if there's any. Nobody knows who they are. They throw people into unmarked cars. They never tell them why they're being thrown into a car. And what I this has been going on now for what two weeks in Portland yeah, yep. something like that every night God bless by the way the mothers who are all you know arm in arm protecting their children who are demonstrating yeah um, but uh, this it, you know there's certain phrases from our past that make you sit up and pay attention yeah one of them is secret police and that is exactly what these people are that the federal government plopped down in Portland because there were people demonstrating there. As far as I know, he hasn't quite gotten rid of any part of the Constitution, and people have a right to do that. Mm -hmm. Every yeah, oh, they do. And I don't, that. what I, what the, my biggest question is at to two week with isn't there some, isn't there some way? that local government can say, get out of here and make them go. Policing demonstrations is a local issue, always has been. Mm -hmm. Local police take care of that. Why? And, and here, the, from the mayor, the governor, have, have, and a bunch of other people, I think both senators and a good deal, a good number of our representatives from Oregon have told the federal government they want these unknown people who are, by the way, also masked, so no way to ever identify them in the future. Um, just get out of here. We'll handle our own problem. Why can't that be forced? Why isn't there a way to make that happen? Apparently, they can stay as long as the federal government wants to from what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't understand. Um, the 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 thing that gets me about it is that these are people who are protesting for the most part freedom of speech uh what they're saying is well it, they're defacing the federal building and we're there to protect the federal building well to begin with defacing the federal building they're painting on the walls okay there are ways of getting that off after it's all over and you're back to your same old federal building 
But the problem is, and I've always had an argument, that the police, their main job is not to protect people. It's to protect property. And, and we always value the protection of property over the protection of people. And that's what we've got but, but going I'm here. Not, but it's not the police. It's not the local police that are doing this. Oh, I know that. But what I'm saying is they're using property as their excuse. For, you know? And you're, well, I, I don't think the excuse is the problem. I think the problem is grabbing people off the street for no reason and not telling them why they're being arrested, not being able to identify who's arresting you, being thrown in a, by the way, a rental car, not even something the federal government owns, Yeah. and taking them off somewhere. And I don't understand why it can't be stopped. I mean, were the founding fathers that dumb that it's not set up in a way that we that the federal government can't take over a local city? Well, I don't think they can, but but they well, are. They've done it. But they but they, but they can, but they are, and I think that's the point. You know, uh, it's well, it, who? I mean, the question is, who can make them stop? Well, um, unless the people who are in those demonstrations want to take on these police physically, nobody. Unless somebody jumps in with some kind well, of... Then illegal. they will be arrested for attacking a federal officer. Yeah. They can't do that. Right, right. So, so who can make it stop? Who can make it stop? Well, Trump can make it stop. Bill Barr can make it stop. Uh, the Homeland Security people can make it stop. But they're not going to. Because this is an election year, and the president wants to show that he's the, uh, uh, the president of law and order. Who, by the way, uh, yesterday when they asked him about Ghislaine Maxwell, who was the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, is being accused of Epstein's uh, helper. Tra tra sex trafficking. Uh, they asked him about her. He said, I wish her well. Yeah, I saw He said it, it twice, by the that. way. He, he wanted to make sure you knew he said it twice. What, what is that all about? You know, this, this, I don't really care. So he care is not the president of law and order. Uh, 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 giving Stone a, uh, a commutation, uh, is that law and order? You know what worries me is he's saying, I, th I think that the biggest federal government problem besides not not taking charge of, of the virus mm -hmm. is this attack in Portland. And the president has said that it'll next go to Chicago. Well, Chicago has a murder problem mm -hmm. that Portland, Oregon doesn't. Right. Eight more, maybe 12 more, I don't remember what people shot this past weekend in yeah. Chicago. Mm -hmm. That then will give those kind of cops a reason to shoot and then we're in we're already in deep trouble well, and then we're really really well trouble. what's happening in chicago is a local police issue it's not well, a, so is it in portland oregon you know doesn't seem yeah. to matter uh and I, it's a shame what's happening in chicago but chicago you know he, he go back to the 20s they were killing each other in the streets i don't know there's something about chicago but, no, I mean, th this is really serious. We shouldn't be making jokes Well, no, but what I'm saying is, well, uh, what I don't get is it's black. And this is, I want to be really, I want you to be really clear where I'm coming from here. We are in deep, deep political trouble. What Trump has done is deployed a secret army. With these, these men, with their, I don't know, maybe they're women too. You can't tell they've. Faces are completely covered with gas masks and camouflage. Hard to know who these people could be, even, you know, men or women. Um, we know where this took place before. Yep. We, we don't have to talk about that. We know. Yeah. And it's being done here. And it, it may be the darkest, most ominous thing that's ever happened in the United States domestically. I agree with you, and, and we're almost, we've almost run out of time, but I'll ask you one major question. Have we become a banana republic? Well, I don't think, I, I, you, I don't know. I, I have no place, I, I just can't deal with, with yeah. labor 
it, 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 it cheapens things to give so it a I, I guess I have no problem asking you this last question. Who are you voting for? <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's a question for you. Yeah. Um, we all know that I have two deadly diseases and I've entered hospice, which means I don't have a lot of time to live. And I desperately want to see the results of this election in November. You will. Wait a minute. I haven't brought up the question. We vote by mail in Oregon. It's been done here that way for 20 years. Trump can't do anything about it. Yeah. And we usually get ballots about three weeks ahead. Yeah, of the yeah. actual election date. Mm -hmm. So let's say my ballot arrives because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I fill it all in and I mail it off. Um, what if I die before election day? Do they count it? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and with that, we're going to call it to a close. Uh, you can find Ronnie Bennett at timegoesby.net. Mm -hmm. It's about what it's like to get old, which sometimes is fun and sometimes it isn't goes either way <laughs> goes either way thank you ronnie great talking to you once again we'll see you in too, a couple darling. of weeks take good care bye bye i love you